In this video, you're going to learn about stoichiometry. I know that seems like a big word, but it's actually a pretty simple process. Make sure you copy down everything in this video, and it'll make the process even easier. So, let's start with what does stoichiometry actually mean? Stoichion is the Greek origin of the word that means element. Matrion is the Greek origin of the word that means to measure. So with stoichiometry, you're going to be measuring elements. So stoichiometry itself is the process of calculating the amounts of substances involved in a chemical reaction. So the amount of the product formed by a chemical reaction can be calculated based on the amounts of the reactants. So you can solve a stoichiometry problem using the reactants that you have present. Your excess, which is represented by XS, is the reactant that remains after a chemical reaction has taken place. So, making predictions. Coefficients from a balanced chemical equation indicate the mole ratio relationships which make predictions about how much we need of something or how much we can make from what we already have. So there are some steps for making predictions. So using the mole ratios, we can identify how much is needed. That is what we're going to call the before. B, how much can be made. That's what we're going to call the after. So step two, to make these predictions, you're going to need to consider the changes that occur during the chemical reactions. So you can actually think about what types of chemical reactions are taking place, and that can help you figure out what kind of changes are occurring. But then step three, you're going to use the before change after, which is known as the BCA chart, you're going to keep track of what's happening to the particles or the mole ratios during a chemical reaction. So these are now the steps for solving stoichiometric calculation problems. So step one, you're going to write and balance the chemical equation. You should be pretty good at that. Remember, that describes the chemical reaction and its mole ratios. Step two, you're going to fill in the before line with the given information. That's going to be found in the problem. So you're going to have to pay attention to what is stated in those word problems. So you're going to mark what you find in the table with its units. Step three, use the ratio of coefficients to determine the change made. And then step four, complete the table for what remains after the chemical reaction is complete. And then step five, notice it has a star beside it. You only use step five if it's going to ask you to determine the mass. So you're going to have to convert the mass, um, convert your answer that's in moles to the mass, which is measured in grams. So this is our first example. You don't need to copy down the word problem itself, but you do need to copy down your balanced equation. So it says hydrogen sulfide gas, which smells like rotten eggs, burns in air to produce sulfur dioxide and water. How many moles of oxygen gas are needed to completely burn? 2.4 moles of H2S, which is your hydrogen sulfide gas. So. They have the setup of the, of the equation for you, H2S, which is a gas, plus oxygen gas is going to produce sulfur dioxide gas and water, which is a liquid. So we're going to balance this out, start with the element that appears just one time on each side, so that's sulfur. So sulfur is um, already balanced because there's one on each side. Your hydrogen, there's two on the left side. And there are two hydrogen on the right side. So as of now, your hydrogen are also balanced. And then with your oxygen, you have two on the left side, but you have three on the right side. So we need to balance out our amount of oxygen. So what we start by doing is putting a two here. So as we add a two over here to the product side, then you're going to have four hydrogen and two oxygen. So... Four hydrogen on this side, you have two on this side. So two divide, so four total over here divided by two subscript gives you a two here. So now you have four hydrogen on each side, but when you change that amount of hydrogen, now you've also changed the amount of sulfur. So now you have two atoms of sulfur. 
you only have one of the product size, so we need to add a two. So two hydro, I'm sorry, two coefficient gives you two sulfurs, and then you have two sulfurs from this coefficient on the right side. So now your hydrogen are balanced and your sulfur are balanced now onto your oxygen. So when we added the two over here, that gave us four oxygen. Two times two is four. And then this coefficient of two gave you another two oxygen. So two plus four gives you a total of six. Now we need six on the reactant side. So six divided by this coefficient, I'm sorry, six divided by the subscript of two gives you a coefficient of three. So now your hydrogen are balanced, your sulfur is balanced, and your oxygens are balanced. So now we're going to plug in our information into our BCA chart. So we're going to start with what it gave us, and it's already underlined for you. 2.4 moles of hydrogen sulfur, I'm sorry, hydrogen sulfide gas. So we're going to fill in our 2.4 here. Remember, it told you to include your units. And then it did not tell us the amount of oxygen. So remember, if it does not tell you the amount, we're going to assume that it's an excess. So we're going to put an X S here. And then for our products, they have not been created yet, so we're just going to put zero there for now. So now we're going to go to our change line. And with our change line, we're going to actually use those mole ratios. So with those mole ratios, they're based upon the balanced chemical equation, and it's also going to be based upon whatever they gave us in the problem. So because they gave us 2.4 moles of hydrogen sulfide, that's what we're going to use to base all the rest of the ratios on. So starting with the first compound, you're going to have a 2 to 2 ratio. The 2 at the bottom, which is your denominator, is going to be based upon your hydrogen sulfide that's going to be used for each of your, com your compounds. So 2 to 2 ratio multiplied by the 2.4 moles that it gave you in the problem. That's how we get the minus 2.4 moles over here. And it's going to be negative because this is something you're using to make the product. So it's no longer going to be present. So then you have your amount of oxygen gas. So the ratio here would be a 3 to 2 ratio. It's also going to be subtracted because this is what you're going to use to get your products. Multiply that by 2.4 moles. And then you're going to get a negative 3.6 moles. And then on the product side, now we're also going to use those ratios, but it's also going to be based upon the 2.4 moles given in the original problem. So... 2 to 2 ratio, this time it's going to be positive because you're producing this, times 2.4. And that's going to give you a positive 2.4 moles and the same thing for your water. So, remember these are negative because this is what we're putting in the reaction to get our products and these are going to be positive because this is what we're getting out of the reaction. So, when you actually go to your after line now, there's going to be a zero here because you start out with 2.4 and you're losing 2.4, so you don't get anything out of this reaction as far as leftover hydrogen and sulfide. Remember, your oxygen started off as excess, so we don't even have to do the math for this one. It's also going to end in, in excess. So then with your sulfur dioxide, you add 2.4, and that's going to be brought down. Same thing with your water, your 2.4 moles are going to be brought down. So in this equation, you had your hydrogen sulfide, the oxygen gas, sulfur dioxide, and the water. It asks you to find how many moles of oxygen gas are going to be needed to completely burn 2.4 moles of hydrogen, disul hydrogen sulfide. Excuse me. So when you look for your actual moles of oxygen, that's going to be in excess. So... That negative 3.6 is what you were seeking to find from the problem. So you need negative 3.6 moles in order to make this whole reaction occur. So that's what your actual answer is going to be, 3.6 moles of O2. So now we're going to go to the next problem. So example two, how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced if 2.5 moles of calcium hydride, which is CaH2, react accordingly to the equation below? So here it already gave you the balance equation. So all you're doing is now filling in your BCA chart. So we're going to start with your B or your before line. 
So it gave you 2.5 moles of calcium hydride. And remember, if it doesn't tell you how much water, then it's going to be in excess. So X, S, and then you have not produced calcium hydride excuse me, calcium hydroxide or hydrogen gas yet. So now we're going to our change line. And with the change line, you're indicating the amount of ratios multiplied by the 2.5 moles that it gave you. So since we were basing it off of the calcium hydride, this is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio multiplied by 2.5 moles. Because this is being used in a reaction, it's going to be a negative 2.5 moles. Your excess, this is going to be a negative 2 to one ratio with the denominator being the calcium hydride. That's also multiplied by 2.5 moles. When you get over to the product side, now you're going to have a positive one-to-one -one relationship multiplied by the 2.5 moles. You can get positive 2.5 moles. Same thing with your water, except for it's going to be a two-to-one ratio, which is going to give you a positive five moles. So when you go to your after line, You've already used up your calcium hydride. So then with your water, you're left with excess water. And then with your amount of calcium hydroxide and your amount of hydrogen gas, they're just brought down. So then you get 2.5 moles of calcium hydroxide and then 5 moles of water. If you go back to what the question asks us, it says how many moles of hydrogen gas would be produced. So your hydrogen gas produced or this equation produced five moles of hydrogen gas. So your answer would be five moles H2. So now we're going to go to our last example. So once again, you don't have to write down the, the word equations, but make sure you're writing down your balance equations. How many moles of water will be produced if 0.45 moles of oxygen gas reacts? So it asks you, in addition to that, how many grams of water are produced? So then you're going to have to do that step five, where you have to convert your answer from moles to grams. So you look at your BCA chart, fill in 0 0.5 moles of gas. So because it doesn't mention the benzene, it's excess. Then you're multiplying right here. I'm sorry. Then you're just plugging in your 0 0.5 moles of oxygen gas. You have not produced carbon dioxide or water yet. So there's zero. Then you go to your mole ratios where you're going to multiply. So you're matching everything up to this oxygen gas ratio. So this is going to be a 2 to 15 ratio. We're going to multiply by the, four point, the 0 0.45 moles. Same thing here. So this is going to be a 15 to 15 ratio. Multiply by 0 0.5 for 0 0.45 moles. So we're going to get negative 0 0.6 moles over here and negative 0 0.36 moles over here. And then we go to our products. You're going to get a positive 12 to 15 ratio multiplied by 0 0.45 moles. Same thing with your water, positive 6 to 15 ratio multiplied by 0 0.45 moles. So that's going to give you 0.36 moles and 0 0.18 moles. So you look at what you have for your after line, and you're going to have excess benzene still. You're not going to have any um, oxygen because it's been used up. And then you're going to just bring down your amount of carbon dioxide and your amount of water. And remember, anytime you have a hydrocarbon oxygen reacting together, you produce carbon dioxide and water. This is a combustion reaction. Then you go back to your question, actually, how many moles of water will be produced? So you produce 18 moles of water for the first question. The second question, actually, how many grams of water are produced? So then we take your answer of your 18, 0 0.18 moles, so 0 0.18 moles, and then you're going to put in one mole because that's what you're trying to get rid of as far as the amount of moles. Then you're going to plug in 18 grams because water weighs... 1 gram multiplied by 2, then oxygen weighs 16 grams. So then you're going to do 0.18 times 18, and that's actually going to give you 0 0.36 grams of water. So...
make sure you practice this on your own. You're going to have your own activity to get done. So make sure you go back and you check over my math. Good luck.